Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 98 of 2019 reorganizing the Tender Board's administrative and technical body. The Tender Board's administrative and technical body have been reorganized under the Secretary General of the Tender Board and the rank of Ministerial Under Secretary in charge of the Technical Evaluation Directorate and the Technical Specifications and Qualification Directorate. His Majesty the King also issued Decree 100 of 2019 restructuring the Supreme Council for the Environment. The Council has been restructured under the presidency of His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa and comprising the following members. His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid bin Isa Al Khalifa as Vice President. The Minister of Oil as Member. The Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning as Member. The Minister of Transportation and Telecommunication as Member. The Minister of Health as Member. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism as Member. The Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs as Member. CEO of the Supreme Council for the Environment as Member. Khawla Khalid Al Muhannadi as Member. The duration of their membership will be four years renewable. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa participated alongside leaders of the GCC countries in the opening session of the 40th Summit of the GCC Supreme Council, chaired by the custodian of two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud at Daraya Palace. During the session, King Salman stated that the GCC has been able to overcome crises that the region faced, adding that the Iranian regime continues its violent policies and threats to the region's security. He stated that the international community must take measures to ensure energy supply and sea pass passages in the region.
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa participated alongside leaders of the GCC countries in the closed working session of the 40th Summit of the GCC Supreme Council, chaired by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud at the Raya Palace. During the session, GCC leaders discussed issues and topics on the agenda of the 40th GCC Summit. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa participated alongside leaders of the GCC countries in the closing session of the 40th Summit of the GCC Supreme Council, held under the chairmanship of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud at Daraya Palace. The Secretary General of the GCC, Dr. Abdul Latif Al Zayani, gave the session's closing statement. Following that, the Saudi monarch announced the end of the 40th Summit of the GCC. قاد الدول مجلس التعاون على أن يظل هذا المجلس المبارك كيانا متكاملا متماسكا ومترابطا وقادرا على مواجهة كافة التحديات والمخاطر وقد تحققت خلال مسيرته إنجازات مهمة من خلال التمسك بالمبادئ التي وضعها قادة دول المجلس في النظام الأساسي الذي تم إقراره في مايو عام 1981 مؤكدا أن الهدف الأعلى لمجلس التعاون هو تحقيق التنسيق والتكامل والترابط بين الدول الأعضاء في جميع الميادين وصولا إلى وحدتها وقد جاء وقوف دول مجلس التعاون صفا واحدا أمام الاعتداءات التي تعرضت لها المملكة العربية السعودية خلال هذا العام تجسيدا للسياسة الدفاعية لمجلس التعاون القائمة على مبدأ الأمن الجماعي المتكامل والمتكافل للدفاع عن كيان ومقومات ومصالح دوله وأراضيها وأجوائها ومياهها الأقليمية وللمبادئ التي تضمنتها اتفاقية الدفاع المشترك التي تم إقرارها في عام 2000 ميلادي من أن أمن دول المجلس وحدة لا تتجزأ وأن أي اعتداء على أي من الدول الأعضاء هو اعتداء عليها جميعا إن الإجراءات التي اتخذتها المملكة العربية السعودية ودول المجلس للتعامل مع الهجمات التي تعرضت لها الملاحة الدولية في الخليج والمنشآت النفطية في المملكة العربية السعودية قد أكدت حرصها على استقرار سواق البترول وتعافي الاقتصاد العالمي ومصالح الدول المنتجة والمستهلكة بالتعاون والتنسيق مع القوى الفاعلة في المجتمع الدولي وتؤكد التحديات التي تواجهها المنطقة الأهمية القصوى لتعزيز آليات التعاون بين دول المجلس في جميع المجالات وتحقيق أقصى مراحل التكامل والترابط بين الشعب الخليجي الواحد وإعلاء دور منظومة مجلس التعاون في الحفاظ على الأمن والاستقرار والرخاء في هذه المنطقة وتفعيل آليات الشراكات الاستراتيجية والتعاون التي تربط منظومة مجلس التعاون مع الدول الشقيقة والصديقة لقد تضمنت رؤية خادم الحرمين الشريفين الملك سلمان بن عبد العزيز آل سعود ملك المملكة العربية السعودية التي قرها القادة في قمة الرياض في ديسمبر 2015 الأسس اللازمة لتحقيق تلك الأهداف من خلال تعزيز العمل الخليجي المشترك والارتقاء بآلياته بما يتوافق مع التغيرات الإقليمية والدولية كما أكدت رؤى المجلس أهمية الحفاظ على المرونة العالية والاستجابة العملية لمتطلبات كل مرحلة من مراحل المسيرة منذ فترة التأسيس وحتى الآن وضرورة استشراف تحديات المستقبل وتمكين المرأة الخليجية وإشراك فئة الشباب والقطاع الخاص لمواكبة التحولات المستجدة في جميع المجالات وفيما يلي أهم الخطوات اللازمة لتحقيق تلك الأهداف السامية أولاً التكامل العسكري والأمني يتم استكمال كافة الإجراءات اللازمة 
لضمان أمن وسلامة أراضي دول المجلس ومياهها الإقليمية ومناطقها الاقتصادية وفقاً لاتفاقية الدفاع المشترك وما نصت عليه رؤية خادم الحرمين الشريفين بشأن تسريع خطوات التكامل العسكري وتعزيز التصنيع الحربي في دول المجلس مع التأكيد على أهمية دور المجتمع الدولي في الحفاظ على حرية الملاحة في الخليج العربي والمضايق الدولية أمام أي تهديد والعمل على مع الدول الصديقة والشقيقة لمواجهة أي تهديدات عسكرية أو أمنية ثانياً تحقيق الوحدة الاقتصادية يتم تنفيذ ما نصت عليه الرؤية بشأن استكمال منظومة التشريعات والقرارات اللازمة لتنفيذ ما تبقى من خطوات التكامل الاقتصادي بين دول المجلس بما في ذلك الاتحاد الجمركي والسوق الخليجية المشتركة والتكامل المالي والنقدي وصولاً إلى تحقيق المواطنة الخليجية الكاملة والوحدة الاقتصادية بحلول عام 2025 ميلادي ثالثاً استكمال متطلبات التنافسية العالمية تسعى دول المجلس إلى تحقيق مراكز متقدمة عالمياً عن طريق إدارة تكاملية تحت مظلة مجلس التعاون لصياغة أساليب عصرية في توظيف ملفات المستقبل وتضمينها في كافة الخطط المطروحة وفي مقدمتها استغلال العلوم والتكنولوجيا المدعومة بالأبحاث لإيجاد حلول للتحديات المشتركة التي تواجه المنطقة مثل تأمين الماء والطاقة والزراعة وإيجاد حلول للأمراض المعدية وغير المعدية تشجيع ريادة, تشجيع ريادة شبابية نحو المستقبل عبر تعزيز الوعي بأهمية الابتكار وريادة الأعمال بين جميع شرائح المجتمع خاصة طلبة الجامعات تطوير البنية التحتية والتشريعات القانونية والتنظيمية بما يسهم في تمكين المبتكرين والتعاون مع الجهات الحكومية والخاصة وبرامج الاستثمار والصناديق الدولية لدعم وتمويل المشاريع الشبابية الناشئة وتشجيع المشاريع المشتركة بين شباب دول المجلس وضع تحقيق الأمن الغذائي هدفاً ثابتاً لمجلس التعاون من خلال تطوير استراتيجية مشتركة للأمن الغذائي تنتهج الابتكار والتكنولوجيا أساساً إلى جانب تكوين التحالفات لتعزيز سلسلة الإمداد المشترك والمتنوع للمنطقة توظيف التقنية بما في ذلك الذكاء الاصطناعي لتطوير الخدمات الحكومية ورفع كفاءة الخدمات المقدمة للمواطنين وضع مناهج دراسية متخصصة لبناء قدرات الشباب في مجال توظيف التقنية وإيجاد فرص لخلق شركات وطنية يقودها الشباب لتحقيق ذلك وجذب الاستثمارات في مجال توظيف التقنية من خلال بيئة محفزة وتشريعات ملائمة رابعاً تعزيز الشراكات الاستراتيجية إن التحديات التي تواجهها المنطقة تتطلب تعزيز علاقات التعاون والشراكة ورفع مستويات التنسيق الاقتصادي والثقافي والأمني والسياسي مع كافة الدول الشقيقة والصديقة والمنظومات الإقليمية والدولية الفاعلة واستكمال مفاوضات التجارة الحرة وتنفيذ خطط العمل المشترك وفق برامجها الزمنية بما يعود على مواطني دول المجلس بالفائدة ويعزز المكان الدولية لمجلس التعاون ودوره في القضايا الإقليمية والدولية خامساً تطوير آليات العمل المشترك إن تحقيق أهداف العمل المشترك المنصوص عليها في النظام الأساسي يتطلب الاستفادة من النماذج التكاملية في العالم والأدوات الفاعلة التي أثبتت نجاحها 
بما في ذلك الالتزام بالبرامج الزمنية المحددة المحددة لتنفيذ كافة خطوات التكامل بين دول المجلس ومعالجة ما قد تتعرض له من تحديات كما يتطلب ذلك تعزيز قدرات ودور الأمانة العامة لتحقيق تلك الأهداف من خلال تطوير آليات الحوكمة المالية والإدارية والشفافية والمسائلة واستكمال تنفيذ ما ورد في رؤية خادم الحرمين الشريفين وقرارات المجلس الأعلى بشأن معالجة المنظمات الخليجية المتخصصة لتعزيز مساهمتها في تحقيق أهداف مجلس التعاون لقد أكد قادة دول المجلس اليوم حرصهم على الحفاظ على قوة وتماسك ومنعة مجلس التعاون ووحدة الصف بين أعضائه والحفاظ على هذه المنطقة واحة للاستقرار والأمن والرخاء الاقتصادي والسلم الاجتماعي كما أكد القادة أن مسيرة المجلس قد حققت الكثير من الإنجازات لمواطنيه إلا أن التحديات المستجدة والمستقبلية تستوجب الارتقاء بآليات العمل المشترك وتطويرها وتفعيل دور الشباب والقطاع الخاص وإعداد جيل قادر متمكن ومؤهل بأدوات ومتطلبات التحولات المستجدة في المنطقة والعالم صدر في مدينة الرياض يوم الثلاثاء الثالث عشر من ربيع الآخر عام 1441 هجري الموافق العاشر من ديسمبر عام 2019 ميلادي شكرا طويلا His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa attended the lunch banquet hosted by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, in honor of the leaders of the GCC countries who are participating in the 40th summit of the GCC Supreme Council at Daraya Palace. At the end of the lunch banquet, His Majesty the King bid farewell to the Saudi King and other GCC leaders. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa arrived in Saudi Arabia's capital Riyadh earlier to head the Kingdom of Bahrain's delegation to the Arabian GCC 40th Supreme Council Summit. His Majesty the King was received by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, the Governor of Riyadh region, His Royal Highness Prince Faisal bin Bandar bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, and GCC Secretary General Dr. Abdul Latif Al Zayani. His Majesty then shook hands with their Highnesses, Princes. Uh, ministers and members of Bahrain's embassy in Riyadh. His Majesty issued a statement in which he expressed delight to arrive in Saudi Arabia and expressed gratitude to the Saudi King for his kind invitation to participate in the 40th GCC Supreme Council se session. His Majesty also expressed pride in the flourishing strong fraternal relations between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia established on joint history and shared destiny which always witnessed growth and development at various levels making them an example of integration and fraternity. His Majesty affirmed that the 40th GCC Supreme Council session are an important opportunity for consultation and exchange of views between their Majesties and Highnesses, the leaders of the GCC, in matters that contribute to boosting collective work and mutual cooperation to preserving the accomplishments of states and culminating in the achievement of GCC people's aspirations for more prosperity and welfare and continue its pivotal role in consolidation of the security and stability of the region as well as boosting efforts aimed to reach peaceful and comprehensive of solutions and overcoming challenges. His Majesty also expressed appreciation and gratitude to the Saudi King in serving Gulf, Arab and Islamic issues for the strategic role of Saudi Arabia at the regional and international arenas. He reiterated confidence in the care and wisdom of the Saudi King which will make the outcomes of the summit up to the level of the challenges the GCC faces, adding that this summit will be an important new building block in the march of the GCC Council to achieve the aspirations of its people. The Royal Honor convo Convoy was led by the Ambassador of Saudi Arabia to Bahrain, His Royal Highness Prince Sultan bin Ahmed bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud.
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa headed to Saudi Arabia to head Bahrain's delegation to the 40th GCC Supreme Council Summit. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa was at the forefront of officials who bid farewell to His Majesty. His Majesty was accompanied by an official delegation comprising the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Works and Youth Affairs and National Security Advisor His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Minister of the Royal Court Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the Minister of Foreign Affairs Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Muhammad Al Khalifa, the Media Affairs Advisor to His Majesty the King Nabil bin Ya'qub Al Hamar, the Minister of Information Affairs Ali bin Muhammad Al Rumahi, the Ambassador of Bahrain to Saudi Arabia Sheikh Ahmed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Head of Protoc Royal Protocol Major General Khalifa bin Ahmed Ahmed Al Fadala, the personal secretary to His Majesty Hamad bin Ali Al Kabi, the head of royal follow up affairs, Air Vice Marshal Mohammed bin Buhsain Al Msalam. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa returned to the Kingdom of Bahrain following a visit to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to head Bahrain's delegation to the 40th GCC Supreme Council Summit, which concluded its sessions in Riyadh. His Majesty the King sent a cable of thanks and appreciation to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, for the warm welcome and generous hospitality, which reflects a distinguished level of historic brotherly relations between the two countries and people. His Majesty commended the Saudi monarch's patronage of the GCC summit and the visions and opinions expressed that embody the keenness to continue the GCC's march at various levels. His Majesty affirmed that the results of the session and decisions will have a great impact in promoting collective action and joint cooperation for the interest of Gulf countries and people for the security, stability and prosperity of the region. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting held at Qudaybiyah Palace where the cabinet secretary general Dr. Yasser al Nasser made the following statements. On the occasion of the Kingdom's celebration of National Day, the Cabinet congratulated His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and the people of Bahrain in commemoration of the founding of the Bahrain state during the reign of the founder Ahmed Al Fatah as an Arab Muslim country in 1783 and the anniversary of His Majesty's accession to the throne. The cabinet expressed pride in the manifestations of development, prosperity and progress in the kingdom as a result of His Majesty's leadership. The cabinet recalled with appreciation the sacrifices of the martyrs which will remain an eternal memory and a source of pride for the country. The cabinet welcomed the co convening of the 40th GCC summit in which His Majesty the King heads Bahrain's delegation wishing the summit success. The cabinet hailed the patronage of His Majesty the King to the 100th anniversary of Bahrain Police, commanding the content of His Majesty's speech and the directives it contains that reflect the royal appreciation for the efforts of the police. The cabinet also congratulated the affiliates of the Ministry of Interior on the occasion and praised their role in defending the kingdom's gains and establishing the pillars of security and stability. The cabinet also expressed pride in His Majesty's support to the youth and sports sector, lauding the patronage of the Middle East Ironman Championship and the support it provides to organizing regional and international championships and making outstanding successes. The cabinet congratulated His Majesty the King and the people of Bahrain on the national football teams winning the 24th GCC Cup, describing it as a historic and honorable achievement for Bahraini football. It hailed the efforts of the administrators and team players to make this achievement. It also expressed appreciation for the support of the citizens and residents as well as the kind sentiments of the GCC country's citizens on the occasion. The cabinet congratulated the winning institutions in the fourth Bahrain Award for Entrepreneurship, which was patronized by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, commanding the encouragement of the award provides for innovation and diversity in the private sector. The cabinet noted the status of the kingdom and its potentialities in hosting Islamic banks, highlighting the importance of the International Conference for Islamic Banks held under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince recently in raising this status. The cabinet carried out His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's directives to launch a 100 million dinar fund in coordination with the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry and National Bank to support the private sector. In that light, the cabinet approved four agreements with national banks to help support the private sector. The cabinet approved a coordination committee's recommendation to reduce fees on building and developing infrastructure from 12 dinars to 10 for each square meter in three installments. Another recommendation was approved to allow the committee to coordinate with the national banks and other relevant parties through the Bayanat system. The cabinet approved a draft response to the Council of Representatives to increase the allowance given to those with special needs to 200 BD per month. 
The cabinet approved a number of MOUs and agreements between Bahrain and Pakistan in the fields of healthcare, media, education, youth and sports and many others. The cabinet approved an MOU between Bahrain and Brunei to establish a joint committee for cooperation in the field of education. The cabinet approved visa exemptions travelers between Bahrain and Japan using private and diplomatic passports. The cabinet approved moving the services of the central register companies that have been identified by the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism in a step that is intended to increase transparency and efficiency. The cabinet noted the outcomes of the International Maritime Organization's 31st Ordinary Meeting, which were presented by the Minister of Transport and Telecommunications. The cabinet likewise noted the Ministry of Youth and Sports plans to organize an electronic games tournament. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, stressed that the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to sport movement in Bahrain contributed to the soccer team winning the Gulf Cup for the first time in its history. During celebrations held at Bahrain International Circuit, His Highness Sheikh Nasser stated that the ideal atmosphere in the celebration confirms that the football game represents the main sport in all games, noting that the celebration underlined love and loyalty to the leadership. His Highness added that he was keen on participation of the Bahraini fans in their celebrations with the national team, thanking them for their cooperation. He also highlighted the wonderful reception that the national team received from the Bahraini people, saying that the people have the right to express their joy. His Highness added that they have been keen to provide full support to the national team in the last period and have witnessed the tremendous work done by the board of directors of the Bahrain Football Association headed by Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa and board members to provide comfort to the national team and these efforts contributed to the remarkable development in the field. He praised the efforts of the technical and administrative bodies of the national team and the players who made great efforts throughout the tournament. هي مو باعجاب ولا هو باستغراب ما دام اولا الدعم الاول والاخير اللي واصلنا مباشره من سيدي جلاله الملك ومتابعه لنا وحث لنا ان احنا دائما نطمح للافضل لازم ان احنا نواصل على هذه القمه ونحافظ على بقائنا على القمه وهذا الدرب الاصعب انك تبقى في القمه ومنتخبنا اليوم ابدا ما خيب ظنه جمهورنا اليوم ابدا ما خيب ظنه ولله الحمد هذه خطط مدروسة ومثل ما خبرنا لاعبينا قلنا أهم شيء طموحكم ما يكون هو كاس الخليج إذا كان طموحكم كاس الخليج جلسنا على هذا المستوى طموحنا عالمي فإذا كان طموحنا عالمي أي شيء دون العالمي لازم يكون من حصيلتنا
طول عمر مثل ما تفضلت جمهورنا كان وفي بمعنى الكلمه، فريقنا كان وفي بمعنى الكلمه، قائلهم كان وفي، الان معناته هناك خطوات جايه في في العهد الزاهر لسيدي جلاله الملك. اللهم لك الحمد، هذا عصر الذهبي اليوم تعدينا مرحله عام الذهب، دخلنا في العصر الذهبي وهذا اقل شيء نقدر احنا نقدمه لقيادتنا الرشيده على راسهم سيدي حضره صاحب الجلاله. وبعدين فرحة الوطن هذه يستاهلون شعب المملكة البحرية يستاهلون هذا الفرح يستاهلون هذه الروح اللي بذقناها بينهم وخلينا هذا المنتخب يفرح كل دار في مملكة البحرين اللهم لك الحمد سمو الشيخ ناصر رجل لا يستسلم الآن احنا أخذنا كاس الخليج وهذا اعتقد محطة من المحطات القادمة ما هي النقاط القادمة الآن مع هذا الفريق اللي شرف وحقق لنا أكثر من بطولة في فترة زمنية قليلة طبعا احنا الحين تركيزنا الأكبر كاس الخليج هو فقط مقياس أداء وحققنا هذا المقياس فزنا بكاس الخليج أنا ما أشوف ما فزنا من خمسين مرة احنا أول مرة نشتغل أصلا من خمسين سنة فأول مرة نشتغل بشكل صحيح أول مرة نشتغل بشكل فريق متكامل أول مرة نشتغل بإعطاء الفرصة والمسؤولية الكاملة للمدرب واللاعبين بدون التدخلات فهذه نتيجتها فالآن عندهم يومين يستانسون يفرحون والتركيز إن شاء الله بعد ثلاثة أيام على معركتنا الحقيقية هي محاولة التأهل إلى كاس العالم ناصر بن حمد قول وفعل دائما طول العمر صرحت في عدة مناسبات وتحققت هذه المناسبات كلها الآن إحنا هل يقودنا هذا الانتصار وتحقيق هذا الحلم إلى إعادة الإعداد بالنسبة إلى أجهزتنا بصورة عامة في مجال كرة القدم طبعا احنا شفنا الحمد لله على كل حال يعني الوعود هذه ما هي بتهور وما هي بعدم دراسة هي مدروسة وفيها صبر وفيها شجاعة وقدام فوضع الفريق المناسب في المكان المناسب هو الصح احنا ما نشوف محسوبيات ما نشوف والله تاريخ فلان ولا من يكون فلان ولا إلى آخرة احنا نشوف اللي قلبه على ديرته شغله في المكان الصحيح وأداءه اداء يرتقي بالمستوى اللي احنا نطلبه والسرعه اللي احنا نبغيها يكون موجود من ضمن الفريق فما في اسم اليوم موجود موجود معانا وصل هذا المنتخب الى هذا المستوى الا ان هذا الشخص منتقى وحسب اداءه وحسب خبرته وفكره لقيناه في المكان الصحيح وحصلنا هذه النتائج والله الحمد رؤيه ناصر بن حمد القادمه الان مع هذا الانجاز الكبير هذا أصبح من الماضي هذا أمس إحنا نتكلم في بكرة اليوم إحنا نتكلم في الحاضر والمستقبل إن شاء الله إحنا على مثل ما إحنا على نفس الأداء وعلى نفس الاندفاع كرة القدم فيها فوز وفيها خسائر مو كذا فوز وخسارة واحدة فيها فوز واحد وفيها خسائر أكثر لكن لازم نفوز في الوقت الصحيح ونخسر أيضا لكن كيف إحنا نعوض هذه الخسارة وكيف إحنا نرجع لكن اهم شيء الثقه، الثقه فينا ما دام جلاله الملك وضع هذه الثقه عندنا وكامل الصلاحيه بالتصرف بالارتقاء بالعالم الرياضي. The first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the v at the VIP lounge at Bahrain International Airport, Bahrain's national football team, who won the 24th Gulf Football Cup held in Doha recently. On this occasion, His Highness Sheikh Khalid said that the Kingdom of Bahrain is proud of the unprecedented football achievements achieved by the Bahrain national football team who won the Gulf Cup title, which was a dream and has become a reality today. His Highness affirmed his follow-up on the team during its participation as it succeeded in appearing with strong levels and was able to reach advanced stages until it reached the final match. He added that the players of the national team were able to enter the history of the Gulf Cup tournaments from its widest gates after winning the title of this ancient tournament that started its competitions in Bahrain in the 1970s. He added that this achievement brought joy and happiness to the heart of every Bahraini. His Highness led a march of celebration of the national team that started from Bahrain International Airport to the Bahrain International Circuit.
His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa affirmed that the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the youth and sports sector makes a dream a reality, adding that the achievement of the national football team of winning the 24th GCC Cup asserts the team's readiness. He noted that the outstanding levels the Bahraini sports reached is a result of the support of the government led by His Royal Highness Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and the follow up of His Royal Highness Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness noted that the team's achievement brought pleasure to people in the kingdom, hailing the outstanding level presented by the national team in the final matches of the tournament. He commended the efforts of the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, which left a large impact on the achievement. He also praised the role of Bahrain Football Association and its supreme administration led by Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa and the Deputy President Sheikh Khalid bin Salman Al Khalifa. His Highness wished all the team players and the administrative body success in the coming periods. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa praised the outstanding performance of the national team that achieved the 24th Arabian Gulf Cup. He said that this honorable achievement is a source of pride for all Bahrainis and highlighted the role of the players and the technical and administrative staff in this great success. He stated that the achievement underpins the high level of Bahraini sports in all areas under the leadership and patronage of His Majesty the King, as well as the role of the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. He also noted the development of the youth and sports sector and the support it receives from His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, whose efforts advanced the Bahraini sports by winning the Arabian Gulf Cup title. His Highness valued Bahrain Football Association President Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa and Deputy President Sheikh Khalid bin Salman Al Khalifa in the outstanding Bahraini success. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Fawzi Yazainal, chaired the weekly meeting where a number of recommendations were approved. The Council approved a recommendation to establish a public prosecution for embezzlement. The session also discussed other recommendations, including a response of the Minister of Justice and Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa, on the investment of the Guardianship Council of Juveniles at Seco Company. The Council also approved a recommendation to speed up the request of the national football team's players for housing, which was forwarded to the Cabinet. The president of the Sustainable Energy Authority, Abdul Hussein Mirza, opened a conference entitled Naturally Environmentalist, which was organized by the Bahrain Women's Society for Human Development and was held at Babco Club in Awali. Mirza said that the event was intended to raise awareness of preserving natural resources, which represents one of the key objectives of the authority. He added that the authority plays a key role in protecting the environment by improving energy efficiency as directed by the cabinet. He added that Bahrain will always support efforts and initiatives by public, private or civil society sectors to save energy and decrease pollution. Khalifa bin Salman port, the kingdom's only commercial port and one of the most efficient ports in the region, is celebrating 10 years of successful operations as it continues to facilitate economic diversification in line with Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030. More on this report. The port's decade of achievements was marked at a high-level event under the patronage of the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications Engineer Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed and attended by senior executives from APM Terminals Bahrain and Global, the maritime business community and government stakeholders who celebrated the success of this public-private partnership. We are very proud to participate today and attend the 10th year anniversary of uh, Khalifa bin Salman Seaport. Uh, the seaport in Bahrain is considered as a vital uh, player in the economy and growth of the economy in the Kingdom of Bahrain. We have witnessed over the past 10 years uh, many numbers that have been uh, broken or uh, passed in terms of the uh, trade exchange, whether on the import or the export. We at Customs Affairs are doing our utmost to support this operation. We are proud to announce that we have completed the installation of two new scanners that would raise our capacity from 25 containers per hour to 120 containers per hour. Over the past 10 years, Khalifa bin Salman port has witnessed stable growth across its various operations and today the port plays a pivotal role as a regional transportation hub serving both the kingdom and the wider region such as the eastern province of Saudi Arabia and the northern Arabian Gulf and has also set technological benchmarks in digitalizing and streamlining logistics and port services. 
absolutely. I think this is fantastic, right? I mean, this is celebrating a vision that started in the Kingdom of Bahrain 15 years ago. And today uh, we see the result uh, of having this concession running for 10 years. So we're very proud of being here. And I think also a manifestation of the very good uh, collaboration and the partnership both with the, with the Ministry of Transport, with the PMA, with APMT, our shareholders and the port, and also all our customers and the private in- uh, actors. And I think what I'm really proud of is this, 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 uh, this uh, uh, Bahrain and, and, and the port here, which is actually becoming a trade hub. So the way we are integrating both the ocean shine of the business and how we are integrating the landside logistics and trying to create that connectivity, I think this is the future of this region. Right? So I think the, the port is uh, very much ahead uh, of the competitors the region, and I'm very forward to, uh, to come back in 10 years and celebrate uh, even bigger success. Sure. So I think it's a privilege to have the opportunity to hold this type of event, to welcome our partners and our colleagues and our people and celebrate just what has been a fantastic success for the port. So for me, it's been an absolute privilege. I think it's just the culmination of what a true partnership looks like. So when we see this type of success, both the productivity gains, the volume gains, how the stock price has performed, I think this is a testament to the way that the partnerships between ourselves and the Ministry of Transportation and Customs and our people all work together. And it just shows what we can achieve when we really all focus on one goal. Well, I'm absolutely hoping that we continue to contribute to the economy and that we grow together. So I'm really optimistic to do great things in the future together. So very excited for the next 10 years. With digital transformation as one of the core focus areas for Khalifa bin Salman Port, the port's continuous growth in the last 10 years can also be attributed to evolving its operations to cater to future growth industries and customer requirements. Reporting for Bahrain International,